This is the eighth, the eighth sermon about the message of morality in Islam. Today, the sermon is about al wafa'u bil ahd which is one of the most powerful teachings in Islam. That means to fulfill your promise. The question of trust is a big question now in families, in neighbors, communities and countries. When trust is broken, then confidence, when people don't keep their promises, then the trust is broken and confidence is broken. Based on Islamic teachings, when you fulfill your covenant, you show your faith and your character. It's not only from moral point of view, but also in business and the contract among the people. When people are faithful to their promise, they are more successful even in their business because people they trust. There is an expression that you have to be so much careful about your, your promise that and very punctual. If you tell your friend that I'm going to see you sometime between four and five, that means really friendship is over. Because you have to see him either at four o'clock or four thirty or five o'clock. But when you say between four and five, that means you are wasting the time of that person that keep him waiting for you for one hour, and finally you don't even go. That's even worse. Let us look at some of the verses in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is the most faithful to his promise. Woman awfa bi'ahdihi min Allah. Who is more faithful? فَلَنْ يُخْلِفَ اللَّهُ أَهْدَهِ he would never violate his promise. He does this. And this is why he said, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, awfu bil -ugud. Now that Allah is wafi, he wants you to be awfiya. Practice what you promise. Awfu bil -ugud. Sometimes the, the verse is عبد. In another verse, فَأَوْفُوا بِالْعَهْدِ إِنَّ الْعَهْدَ كَانَ مَسْقُولًا عَهْدَ has more legal uh, spirit in it when you say, like you make an عهد, a contract. But عهد has is more moral. That means you make a moral commitment. Doesn't matter whether it is al ahd or al ahd it means that you promise and you have to practice it. Kana mas'ula, this is a responsibility. And you are going to be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that how come you promised and you ignored? Then we go to the Prophet. Allah talks about Khalilur Rahman, Ibrahim Khalilur Rahman. Why he is Khalil Rahman, friend of Allah? You know why? Wa Ibrahim alladhi wafa. Because Ibrahim was a man that when he makes a commitment, he honors his commitment. 
The same thing about Ismail, the son of Abraham, another prophet. وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِسْمَعِيلَ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعَدِ He was truthful to his commitment. وَكَانَ رَسُولَ النَّبِيَّ It's interesting that the, the quality of being صادق الوعد comes before the quality of رسول النَّبِيَّ That's more important. That means that you and I, we are not Rasul and Nabiya, we are not the prophets. But at least we can be next to Ibrahim and Ismail if we are Sadiq al Wa'd. If we respect our words and our commitment. In chapter Al Mu'minun, there are seven qualities Allah says, Qad aflah al Mu'minun. The believers are the winners. Why? Why the believers are the winners and the successful people in the world? Because of seven qualities. And one of the qualities that make believers the winners is this. الَّذِينَ هُمْ لَأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَأَهْدِهِمْ رَعُونَ Because they are the people that when they make a commitment, they fulfill it. They respect that. Look at the other role model in our history, Al Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. Why we love Al Imam Al Hussein, we never saw him. Another time, another place. More than 1300 years ago. But when we go and when we do Ziyarat Al Hussein, we say this Ashhadu annaka. وفيت بعهد الله وجاهدت في سبيل الله حتى أتاك اليقين. Oh, Imam Hussein, you are the person who was faithful to his covenant to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and to humanity. You honored your words, and you honored this till the moment of truth when you left this world. And it's interesting that Imam Hussein himself on the day of Ashura, when he goes to every shaheed and visits every body at the time of martyrdom, the time of death of that person, he used to recite this verse, من المؤمنين الرجال صدقوا ما آهد الله عليه فمنهم من قضى نحبه ومنهم من ينتظر وما بدلوا تبديلا He is saying that you who are living this world, O martyr, O shaheed, you are one of those people who kept his promise. You made a contract with your creator and you did not hesitate to faithfully fulfill your covenant with your creator and you proved that with your death. So brothers and sisters, when we say Ahdullah, As-Salatu Ahdullah, As-Siyamu Ahdullah, Al-Hajju Ahdullah, As-Zakatu Ahdullah, we made a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, we made this covenant to fulfill our Salat and Siyam and Hajj and Zakat. And Amr bi Ma'roof, Nahi an al Munkar, and other commitment, Al Qistu, Al Qiyamu bil Qist, to work for justice, to promote what is right, to prevent what is wrong. And then Allah says, Walladina yan kudun ahd Allah, min ba'd mi thaqih, ila anfar ulaik allahum al la'na, wa allahum su'udar. Those who break their covenant. They are losing mercy of God and they are choosing the worst final destination for their life because they broke the mithaq. Another verse, those who broke their mithaq with Rasulullah, الَّذِينَ آهَقْتَ مِنْهُمْ ثُمَّ يَنْقُذُونَ أَهْدَهُمْ فِي كُلِّ مَرَّةٍ وَهُمْ لَا يَتَّقُونَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ The people who have no taqwa, 
The people who have no dignity are the people that any time that they come and they promise something, they break it. It's not just one time, two times. There are people that always do that. And they are mal'unin. They, they deprive themselves from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because every time they do it, you know, sometimes that I have a family counseling and, you know, husband or wife, they come and one of them says that, I'm sorry, I did this, I did this, and I'm not going to do this anymore. And I want her to give me another chance or I want him to give me another chance. And then we try to say, well, you know, he's saying it or she's saying it. And sometimes they don't accept it. They say, Sheikh, he just says it or she just says it. I've been dealing with this situation for 10 years. He does it all the time. He can change. He won't change. He doesn't do it. Then we go through the history of their you know, relationship. Well, we were friends for five years or for 10 years. And then we married. At that time, he told me, he promised me. He made a covenant that I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to stop smoking, I'm going to find a job, I'm going to work, I'm going to provide you and support you as family. I'm not going to hurt you, I'm not going to be disrespectful. He said all of this. And he keeps saying it every time, and every time he breaks it, it's not going to work. It's just amazing that people lose the total trust because of ignoring the covenant, ignoring, saying it and not doing it. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, lima taquluna ma la tafalun. Why you say it if you don't want to do it? Kabura maqtan inda Allah an taqulu ma la tafalun. Subhanallah. Kabura means this is a great, maqt means hate. Anger. This is a great hate in the sight of God to promise and not to do it. How, how you say it? Don't say it then. If you don't want to do it, why you say it? Why you make a promise? If you don't want to honor it. Brothers and sisters, after going to, through these verses, I want us to make this resolution that Make an honorable resolution for our life to respect our covenant, whether it's for Allah, with the Ahlul Bayt, with wife, with husband, with children, with neighbors, with community, with the world. When we make a promise, we must respect it. Nobody forces us to say it, but when we make it, then we have to honor it. And it's very very bad to make a promise and not to mean it from the beginning. Because sometimes just say it and they don't mean it at all. That's the worst thing. Thalab came to the Prophet, he's a very poor guy, he comes to the masjid all the time for the salat, and every time, Ya Rasulullah, al tabi su al tabi su So what's wrong, Thalab? I'm so poor, Ya Rasulullah. And you just pray that Allah, if He shows His grace to me, I'm going to be giving, I'm going to be generous, I'm going to be change the world. Just ask Allah to help me. I'm doing very poor financially. Well, it happened that one of the close relatives of Thalab, whether his uncle or cousin passed away, and they didn't have anybody at the wireth, no inheritor, and by chance, this guy, Thalaba, got all the property, all the farm, all the cattle and everything, and overnight, he became rich. And Rasulullah realized that this man, now he is, he is rich. And he's supposed to pay his life, God, he sent somebody, Ya Thalaba, you remember that you were poor, and you say that if Allah help me, I'm going to do this, pay your zakat. He said, what? Zakat? What is Zakat? I thought the Zakat is a jizya that non-Muslims they're supposed to pay to the Muslim authority. And now that I'm a Muslim, I didn't know that I have to pay too. 
He ignored and he never showed up in the masjid of the Prophet anymore. You know what happened? Allah made a turning point in this story of Thalaba. He said, three verses as a warning for Allah, a wake up call for Allah. He said, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ عَاهَدَ اللَّهَ لَإِنْ آتَانَا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ لَنَسَدَّبَنَّا وَلَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Some of them are saying, Ahad Allah, they made the Ahad. They made a covenant with Allah that if He آتَانَا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Show us your fadl, your grace and generosity. Then we do the sadaqat and we do the charity and we, you know, change the world. I'm going to be very righteous person, very faithful. Then what happened? When they receive fadl Allah and grace of God, they become bakhil, they become greedy. Instead of giving more, become more greedy. They just ignore and they keep going and they don't look back at all anymore. What happened to these people? Look at this verse. They turned their heart to the house of hypocrisy. They let the disease of nifaq and hypocrisy to come to their heart. And this disease is going to stay there till they meet the Lord. Why? Because they violated what they promised the Lord. Because they, they lied. And what kind of disease can be worse than disease of nifaq and hypocrisy? You know, sometimes people before the hajj, they come and they want to, you know, pay their homes, right? They, you know, you sit down for two, three hours and you calculate everything. And so while you, that, that homes is like $20,000 or whatever. So, well, okay, Sheikh, now, uh, inshallah, after I come back from the hajj, I'm going to pay it right away. You see, your hajj, but now at least for this trip that you are making, I mean, you are spending $10,000 for hajj, at least $2,000 comes for that. The minimum paid that. He said, you know, at this time, very sensitive, my situation, my business, but I promise, after I come back from hajj, I'm going to come to the masjid and pay the whole Samuel Imam and Samuel Sada all together. Then he goes hajj and comes back and you don't see him and finally you call and say, yeah, you know, but you know, the situation it changed that I'm going to pay it monthly. Now every month I'm going to pay the masjid $1,000. But just another promise and another promise. And after a while you see that the person who came and made this hajj at least before Hajj, he used to come to the masjid once a while. Now you never see him in the mosque anymore. So, Hajj, you can makbul, you can mashkur. What happened? And there was a case that I told the person, I said, what happened? He said, yeah, you told me that my homes is $20,000. I paid it to somebody else. I said, you know, nashkur, okay, and he thank you very much. So why you came and we spent all this time you know, sometimes something happened that, well, the person become bankrupt or Allah got sick after Hajj or something happened. That's understandable. But if it is out of greed and the person does not honor his covenant with Allah, because zakat is not for ibadullah, zakat is a form of ibadah. It's not even a business, it's next to salah, this is ibadah. And that is, that is very dangerous. Allah says, فَمَنْ نَكَثَ فَإِنَّمَا يَنْكُتُ عَلَى نَفْسِ When you break your promise, you are breaking your own soul. You don't hurt God. وَمَنْ أَوْفَى بِمَا آهَدَ عَلَيْهُ اللَّهَ فَسَيُؤْتِيهَ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا But when you 
respect your promise, you receive your reward. There are so many ayat on this, when so many hadith, man kana yu'minu billah, wal yawm al-akhir, fal yafi'idha wa'ad. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said that, if you believe in God, and you believe in the day of judgment, then fulfill faithfully your commitment when you make it. La deena liman la ahda lah. If somebody has no ahda, no commitment, this person has no religion, no faith. And there is another hadith that Imam Ali salam said, Inna fil nar illa madinatun yuqalu lahu al hasinah afala tas'aluni ma fiha. There is a town in hell called an hasinah, like a hell that nobody can get out of that area of the hell. It's closed. Do you know what is the hasinah? What town is that? فَقِيلَ مَا فِيهَا يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ قَالَ فِيهَا أَيْدِ النَّاكِثِينَ This town is the town of those who made promise, but every time they broke their promise. That is very, very dangerous. And one of the most important promise, brothers and sisters, and covenant, is the covenant of family. And this is why I'm going to continue this discussion, inshallah, next week as well. Because of sensitivity of this subject. You know the word mithaq in the Quran. Mithaq means covenant, means contract, means promise. This word is mentioned in the Quran 25 times. 25 times the word mithaq is mentioned in the Quran. But only three times Allah says mithaq and ghalidha. The, the Sifa of Ghalid is mentioned three times that this mitha, this covenant is so heavy and so firm. Three times says this mitha is heavy. One time is when Allah is talking about Anbiya, He said, وَأَخَذْنَا مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ مِثَاقَهُمْ وَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُمْ مِثَاقًا غَلِيدًا The covenant of Allah with the prophets is a very heavy one. The responsibility of Abraham and Noah and Moses and Jesus and Muhammad, their covenant was so heavy, their responsibility is so high. Another time that the word mithaq and ghalidha is mentioned in the Quran is about Yahud. وَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ لَا تَعُدُّوا فِي السَّبْتِ وَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُمْ مِثَاقًا غَلِيدًا We told the community of Moses that respect the, the law of the Saturday, Sabbath. And we got from them a very heavy covenant. Though unfortunately many of them violated that myth of that covenant many times. Not only at the time of Moses, they keep breaking the myth of even in 21st century. How many times they promised the Palestinians that they are going to do this, they are going to do that, they are going to honor their rights. They are going to withdraw from their territories. Every time that they made a mitah with people, many of them, they broke it. But the third time that mitah and ghalidah is mentioned in the Quran is about family. وَأَخَذْنَ مِنْكُمْ مِثَاقًا غَلِيدًا The time that you get married and you say, I do, I do, means you are signing a declaration. You are signing a heavy covenant. With Allah and with your spouse. قال الباغر عليه السلام المثاق الغليظ هو الأهد المأخوذ على الزوج حالة العقد من آية في إمساك بالمعروف أو تسريح بإحسان. إمام باغر عليه السلام says when you say I do, when you say قبل الزواج, when you say أنت وكيلي, when you say this, you are signing. Covenant that is very, very heavy. That means that you are saying that you are going to honor this contract and keep this contract with love and respect and loyalty. Or if you have to separate, you separate, separate with niceness, not nastiness. You either stay in the contract with respect or you end the contract with niceness. So this is something that inshallah we need to talk about the covenant of the family brothers and sisters.
I have a group of interfaith they have been meeting in our house because it's late. We don't want to keep our staff here late in, in the night. So they have been meeting uh, with me in, in our house the last two weeks to have a conference about the family because this is a general problem for Muslims, for Christians, for the community in general that this mitag and ghalib, this the first institution in human history, the institution of marriage is the first one in human history and we need to fix that. To fix the society we need to fix the family. We cannot fix the world if the family is broken. So how can we work together to bring this civilization of love, civilization of loyalty, civilization of honor in the contract of marriage and protect this declaration of devotion between husband and wife. How can we keep this respected? How can we keep this promise strong? If we cannot fix the family, more youth are going to be destroyed by drugs. More youth are going to be destroyed by addiction of alcohol. More of them are going to be destroyed by depression and losing their hope and getting suicide. We need to focus on the family and this contract. And if we can fulfill the myth of marriage, we can fulfill so many other mawatir, other contract in the society, and this needs action. You go ahead and act, and Allah would observe your action, and His Messenger, and the faithful. And when you meet with your Lord, He would reward you for the good things that you did in this life. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal-Asra inna al-Insana lati fusr, illa al-Nadina amanu wa amilu al-Salihat. والتباصوا بالحق والتباصوا بالسافر صدق الله العلي العظيم وإلى الصلاة إن الصلاة